Hello and welcome to the second episode of CEEC Podcast. The topic of our podcast today is Building Information Modeling. It's me, Esther Chen, your host for this episode. Building Information Modeling is also known as BIM in abbreviation. It has become an arising topic nowadays in the engineering field. Therefore, it is great to have someone who is professional in this field to enlighten us today. Our speaker today is Dr. Sasnizam Sasmisino. He is a senior lecturer at the Faculty of Engineering, University Malaya. His areas of expertise are in building information modeling, BIM, and life cycle assessment. He graduated with a Bachelor of Civil Engineering from University Malaya, and he earned his master's degree in environmental management from University of Hertfordshire, United Kingdom. He also gained his doctorate from University Malaya in Structural Engineering and Materials. In addition, he was the president of CEEC during his undergraduate studies at University Malaya. Let us welcome Dr. Sasnizam. Happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me on this talk. Wow. All right. Before we go into details, Dr. Sas, can you briefly tell us what building information modeling is? All right, so I'd be happy to share my love and joy mm. for building information modeling since it's such a, a, a recent trend nowadays. So, uh, building information modeling, you can abbreviate it. it you can abbreviate it as uh, BIM, mm. but some people mention BIM as well. Mm. And I find that the more common pronunciation now is BIM, even though I spent four years uh, of my PhD pronouncing it as. BIM. <laughs> so now I have to uh, change and say BIM. BIM. So it's actually defined, the official definition is it's a combination of three things. So one is technology mm -hmm. and process and policy. So these three things combined, they uh, give a meaning of building information modeling. So let's maybe I'll just briefly mention what these three components to BIM are. So the first one is technology. And of course, when we talk about technology, we talk about software. So when everybody says BIM, we talk about BIM software and the 3D modeling aspect of it. Uh, but actually, it's more than a modeling software. Yes, of course, when you have a, a 3D model, it looks nice, you can rotate it, and you have so many different options to make it look nice. But for example, in a BIM model, when you draw a line, it is not just a line, but it can be a steel wire. It can be uh, a concrete beam, for example, even mm -hmm. just that the scale is uh, different. And in this line, you can put so much information in it. For example, what is the type of steel that is used? What's the diameter, for example? In traditional AutoCAD software, for example, if you draw a line, it's simply a line. So that's where the information part comes in when you talk about BIM. Mm. So that's the first part, technology. And then the second part is when you talk about process. So the traditional way of making a building is you have an architect, an architect will design something and pass it on to the structural engineer. And then the structural engineer designs the structure and passes on to the other engineering disciplines, electrical, mechanical, for example. And then at the end of the day, they come together and they combine all of their designs into a single one. Mm. But this is a very um, flawed process because you see there are lots of opportunities for things to go wrong, for errors, and for lots of corrections to be made. So when what building information does is it streams lines, this process, and combines everything into a single model where everyone can make changes to that single model. So that's the process part. And the last one, is policy and mm. most people don't really think about policy when they think about BIM but it's very important because when you have a digital 3D model it looks nice it has lots of information in it who owns this model who's the owner is it the client is it the architect is it the engineer who did all the work so these sorts of things uh, need to be defined and need to be uh, standardized in policies, documents, and guidelines so mm. that um, things don't go, people don't fight over, for over things. Mm. Uh, 
construction industry nowadays. So yeah, those three things, they are the important parts of building information modeling. And when you talk about BIM, you always talk about the technology, the process, and the, the policy. Yeah. All right. Understand. And yeah, may I know what are the differences in the implementation of BIM in Malaysia with other countries? Good question, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, BIM, actually Malaysia, was one of the first countries to start using BIM back in the early 2000s. But mm. it was in a small scale and private companies were doing it. Mm. Unfortunately, even though we had a head start doing BIM, we are now currently quite lagging behind in terms of our industry-wide implementation of BIM. Mm. Currently, not even half of our construction projects are using BIM. Mm. Um, but the construction industry or the public agencies in mm. charge of the construction industry are taking a lot of measures to try and bump up or boost up our implementation of BIM. And in Malaysia, the implementation of BIM is more of a top-down approach where the government or um, public agencies are the ones in charge who are actually directing the private sector mm. to start adopting BIM. Mm. Uh, and in a way, it's not really the private sector's fault for not implementing, but it's because there's a lack of a lot of legal framework or the policies which I've mentioned before, which make the private sectors not really into, into using BIM because they don't see any incentives or they don't see any benefits for doing it apart from um, maybe just uh, having a nice model for them to show to people. So, mm. yeah. Yeah, what are the countries that you would recommend for this? Like, uh, for us to study from? The countries, the closest one, the best one, of course, would be Singapore. Mm. Singapore, they have they have, have a mandatory uh, e-submission system, which means if you oh. have a project, a building project in Singapore, you must submit a BIM model through that system for that project to be proof or for it to go ahead as part of the, the other documents that they, they require. And they have been doing uh, BIM in their construction industry for quite some time. For example, in Singapore, mm -hmm. they have had a target to get 80% of their industry to use BIM by 2015. Ours, we only have that 80% target for 2025. So you can see there's a 10-year gap mm. in between our implementation and their implementation. Mm. So I would suggest looking at Singapore first, mm. the closest, the closest uh, neighbours, to uh, really get a good idea of how really to implement BIM. Mm, I see. All right. Um, since now BIM is widely implemented um, in the construction industry, uh, what do you think that students should prepare for it so that we can um, better equip ourselves before getting into the real industry? For students, I would recommend mm. the first thing is to choose one BIM software that mm -hmm. they like and to really learn how to use that software. Mm. Though I mentioned that BIM is composed of three pillars, but the technology is sort of the fundamentals. If you don't know how to use the software, you can't really go into how to collaborate or coordinate with other people. So first of all, choose the software. And there's some lots of them to choose from. You have uh, Archicad, Vectorworks, SketchUp, even Tecla. But I would recommend Autodesk Revit because it's freely available for students to use. Mm. And there's lots of publicly available documents, courses, and even video tutorials to learn how to use Autodesk Revit. And the aspects that I would suggest is learn how to make a simple building in Revit, how to draw it, how to put the footings, walls, and beams, how to annotate or put the dimensions there, and then also how to generate some drawing sheets from that building that you have drawn. And also, once you've done that, learn how to integrate or use Revit with other software like Autodesk Robot, to do structural analysis. So once you get that done, then you can really move on to collaboration with other people or other engineering disciplines. Mm, I see. All right. Um, could you share your challenging moments in any of the projects that related to BIM? Well, um, one of the very first 
public projects in Malaysia to use BIM was the National Cancer Institute in Putrajaya. And mm-hmm. if you've been there, it's a very nice building. It's very nice and it's very, how to say, uh, futuristic, if I would say. So one of the, the main problems that the design team had with that project was that uh, the issues of software and hardware were okay. Like learning how to use the software was okay. Getting the hardware was okay. The only issue was an issue of uh, lack of families. And when you're talking about families in Revit, for example, in the model, you wanted to to put a door mm. in the building itself. Now, this door, you made, you can have a wooden door, a steel door. You can have a, a, a wide door, a very narrow door. So this has to be defined. And this is what we call a family, mm. the door itself and what, the, what dimensions are of the door. And they had to define all of the families for that project. Doors, windows, um, beams, columns, for example. They had to define all of this. And this def- defining these families takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. So that was one of the problems that they encountered. But the efforts were not in vain because the families that they defined during this process were brought into the national database for um, BIM families. Mm. So in the future, other companies can use these families in their own projects. And other companies and other projects can also contribute to this national database. Mm. So yeah, family definition was one of the, the problems in the early BIM projects. Mm, I see. All right, I think this is the last question already. And yeah, thank you so much for Dr. Sass um, joining our podcast today. And I think uh, it's our pleasure to have you with us today. And for me, I think your sharing is quite uh, interesting and insightful. So as a student, I will say that uh, we have some uh, info from Dr. Sass that we need to get ready with uh, one of the BIM software. So we can better equip ourselves uh, for the real industry. All right. Once again, thank you so much, Dr. Sass. You're welcome and thank you very much for having me. This was, this was very fun. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and share it to your friends. If you have any thoughts after listening to this episode, feel free to leave your comments in the comment section below. With that, I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.